Okay, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, I thank you so much for the privilege uh, to speak to your people. Lord, I pray that you will touch my mind and mouth. Help me to say what is right in your eyes. And help us to take everything that we learn from you and to make it part of our lives. I thank you, Lord, for all these blessings. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So we are on, we're still on our 10 fitness, right? And we are on number five, okay. Not not four, we're on five. Okay. We're on five and five, these are 10 things to be fit for heaven, right? Okay, so let's dig into it. Tim Fitness, number five. All right. And so, as we have been doing, let's read the commandment. Let's see what number five says. Are you ready? You guys are asleep this morning, aren't you? So am I. It's okay. All right, number five. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Now, every week that we've done this, we've also looked at the text in Deuteronomy because Moses actually re, uh, repeats, repeats the, the Ten Commandments. So let's look at that one as well. Deuteronomy 5.16. And you can notice that he adds a little more. He's giving a little commentary as he speaks. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may be that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So he adds a little bit just to kind of clarify some things. Uh, but still, same commandment, right? Honor thy father and thy mother. That's pretty well the gist of it. And when I thought about this, uh, you know, Jesus actually talked about this commandment uh, in Matthew 3, or Matthew 15, 3 through 4. He actually has an, uh, kind of gets on to the Pharisees because of some of their practices towards this commandment. Now, remember, the Pharisees were supposed to be the law teachers. I mean, they believed in the law. They were all about it. Uh, but they had a little, well, they had several things kind of sideways, didn't they? So let's read this story. It's pretty interesting. Matthew 15, 3 through 4. So Jesus, he says, but he said, but he answered and said unto them, this is Jesus talking, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? So he's saying, you, your traditions are transgressing the the commandment of God. And uh, for God, who? No, but who did it? God. For God commanded, saying, honor thy father and thy mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Now that's out of the law. Okay, law of Moses. Let's go on to verse 5. But ye, who? Them, not God, they are saying this. This is really important because this is what gets people confused about the law and about the Ten Commandments is they think that Jesus was actually speaking against them, but he's not. He's speaking against their tradition, the tradition of men. So it's very important. Uh, If you don't have a right understanding of that, I think all of you guys do. But if you don't, you really get these things uh, sideways in a lot of situations. But anyway, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father and mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me and honor not his father and mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Let me explain this for a second. So the Pharisees had come up with, um, I'm going to call it a scheme. A loophole. See, when you start to look at the law in a legalistic mindset, right, you start looking for loopholes, ways you can get away. Well, it's okay, I can do this as long as I do it this way, right? I told you guys about my 
uh, my uncle's girlfriend that said she grew up Jewish and she said that they would eat lobster even though it was unclean. They would eat it, but they had to eat it on paper plates. That way that their dishes wouldn't become unclean and they'd have to throw them away, but they could throw the paperwork. See, those are loopholes, right? That's not how we deal with the law of God. So, but the Pharisees, they had that mindset. And so they're telling young men and young women, if you give your money to the temple, you don't have to take, you don't have to help your parents with that money. So like if your parents needed something or whatever, you go, I'm sorry, I can't give it to you because I've given it to the temple. So it was a loophole. And look at Jesus's mindset about it. What is his response to it? Oh, no. No, he says, you have made the law of God or the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Next couple of verses here. Ye hypocrites, well did Elias, which is Isaiah, right? Prophesy of you, say, or was it Elias? It is Isaiah. Okay. I got myself, so I doubted myself for a minute there. Anyway, uh, ye hypocrites, well does Elias the, pro- the prophet prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, who? God. They're worshiping God in vain. That means empty. It's worthless. Teaching the doctrines of the commandments of men. Right? Teaching four doctrines, the commandments of men. So here we have a really clear shot that Jesus is upholding the Ten Commandments. He's saying, no, children should honor their parents. I think that's so important, you know, that we remember that not only does God say this, but Jesus is is, uh, also echoing the same thing. Of course he would, right? So I, I was looking around, and 1 Timothy 5.8 tells us something very interesting about this. Listen to what it says. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those in his own house, he had denied the faith. He had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. If you don't take care of your family, and that includes your parents, if you, you know, if you don't take care of them, you're worse than an infidel. An infidel is someone who's not faithful. Uh, a, might as well say a pagan. So that's pretty harsh words coming from Paul, right? All right. So, do you want to have a long life? Raise your hand if you don't. You don't? Yeah, you got to pay attention. <laughs> I'm tricky. <laughs> we all want to have a long life, right? I mean, nobody wants to die young, right? So let's look at this commandment one more time, and I want you to notice what it says. What? What did I say? Huh? You want to live. Oh, do you want to live? See, what I had a different title, and then I changed it. And I forgot to change life to live. Sorry. Hey, do you want to live for a long time or not? Just stay with me. Don't be distracted by my goof ups, which are many. Anyway, let's look at the commandment again. Did you notice that it said your days will be prolonged? And not only that, but they'll go well with you. If you honor your father and your mother, you honor your parents, and that includes your grandparents, by the way. If you honor those people in your lives, your life will be longer. It will be better. Now, I mean, there's always those cases where somebody stepped out in front of a bus. But I'm just saying, on on the majority, <laughs> on the majority, that's that's going to lengthen your life. Why? Why would it lengthen your life to listen to your mom and dad? There you go. I mean, that's the. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. If you want to listen to my old man, I'll guarantee you. Okay, we're going to get to that in a second. So that's a good point. A very good point. We'll get to that. You're, you're ahead of me, which is typical. But anyway, so think about the wisdom that people gain through life. Now, if you're 10 years old, right? Any 10 year old? Anybody 10 year old in here? Close? Nine. 
So if you're if you're around ten, do you have the wisdom that say your parents have in their thirties? No, you haven't lived a life, right? You haven't been anywhere. I mean, it, it only makes sense that we would listen and honor and respect our parents. Okay, so long life, respect your parents. Now, another thing I noticed, you know, the commandment we're looking at today is the fifth commandment. It says, honor your father and your mother. And I was thinking about this, you know, last Sabbath we talked, or not last Sabbath, but the last Sabbath that I had the sermon, we talked about the fourth commandment. And I noticed something, you know, I, I really didn't, I never really thought this out, and I was just looking at it. Did you notice that the fourth commandment actually tells parents how to treat their kids? It tells them to, to let them have the Sabbath off, you know, right? Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, and, you know, you and your kids, your, your sons and your daughters. So here we have the fourth commandment, which is a part of how we treat God, right? And some of how we treat our fellow man. And it's actually starting us out by saying, parents, treat your kids right. You know, you could, I could see a parent going, well, I, I can't do this today because it's Sabbath, so I'll get my kids to do it. Right? I mean, you know. But that God says, uh-uh, no. You let your kids rest. And then the next commandment, he tells the kids to honor their parents. I thought that's kind of interesting how they're right next together. You know, he could have put it at the end, but he put it right there. So... Pretty cool. Oh, I thought that was interesting. All right, let's see. What else? Okay. To um, talk about what Henrik was bringing up. Honor perfect parents. Now, does the commandment say, thou shalt only honor your parents when they're right? Does it say, honor your parents that are good? No. Oh. So we got to understand that just because your parent can be a knucklehead, I know I'm one, okay? Just because I might be a knucklehead doesn't mean that I don't still deserve or actually, and I'm, I'm uh, what's the word? Um, yeah, that's not the word I was looking for, but uh, anyway, it, it's, it's my, I don't want to say privilege, but right. It's my right to be respected by the law according to my by my kids right and it doesn't matter i mean again if we look at this commandment it doesn't say anywhere in here honor your father and your mother if they're perfect honor your father and mother if they're good or if they're right or right it doesn't say that i, I think some kids and i probably was one of them at some point that looked at the parents and said well they're wrong so i don't have to respect them on this bull that's not true you have to respect your parents. Now, do you have to always do what they tell you to do? No, not if it's against the laws of God. Honestly, I mean, obviously, let, let's use like an extreme situation. Uh, a, a man has a daughter and he decides that he's going to make some money with her. No, she doesn't have to do that. No way. Because that is a, a violation of the commandment. Right? Which we'll get to next time. Uh, maybe not next time, but later. So, obviously, a, a child doesn't have to always obey, especially when it's in con uh, conflict with God's law. But, that doesn't take away the respect, the honor. Does that make sense? Okay. Because, I mean, some parents are pretty rough. I, I mean, you know, I had great parents. By the way, I didn't tell you about this picture. Uh, that's my mom and dad and my little brother and me. Now, I'm the one, I'm the really good looking one right there. So, I mean, I had a great family and I really, so it's really easy for me to say you should honor your parents no matter what, right? But even if your parents are not so great, you still are required to honor them. Now, in some cases that might be, you know, that might even entail going away from them for a little bit, right? If I don't leave, I'm going to dishonor you. So, you know, I'm not telling you how to uh, manage that, but you do still need to respect your parents. All right. Here's a picture of when I first became a parent. 
Uh, that's my dad, me, and Christopher. So, you, you know, the that was a eye-opening experience. It was interesting how my dad became, you know, when I was a teenager, he was just dumb, right? And then all of a sudden I had a kid, and he was the smartest man I knew. So it changes your whole, um, your whole perspective, doesn't it? And then, of course, a little while later, Tateman came along. And that's, that's the day he was actually born. Uh, he's still in his birthday suit. And then lastly, the, the baby came along. And, you know, you always cuddle with your youngest more. I, I don't know. Maybe because you're a little more mature and you understand that they're not going to be they're not going to be little so long, so you got to hold on to them as long as you can. But anyway, so I'm speaking from experience. Not only did I have parents, but I've been one, and I soon will be a grandparent. Well, I'm already a grandparent, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, this is a beautiful thing, and family is so wonderful, and that's why I just love that the Ten Commandments actually, uh, they, they build that foundation for the family, don't they? Just like I showed you, you have the one set telling parents, hey, let your kids rest. And then you have this one telling kids to honor their parents. The, the family is so important to our society, you know? I mean, you look at, uh, they, they've done studies, you look at people in prison, and nine times out of ten, I mean, I don't know the numbers, the you know, the percentages, but they say a high percentage of people in prison from broken families, from families with no dad. And it's really sad. So when we when we don't, you know, protect this institution, uh, we we lose society, not just families, but society. Think about. You know, we, we talked about last, last time, we talked about that the Sabbath was, you know, made by God, right? And it was before sin, right? Well, the family was made before sin as well. You know, Adam and Eve were made and there was no sin. And, and they were already given the, the job to be fruitful and multiply, right? So the family unit was created before sin. And so, uh, again... If we don't have uh, strong families, our society will suffer, and we see that, don't we? I mean, I, I think that's definitely one of the huge issues in our, in our uh, society. You know, busting up families and divorce and all that stuff. It's really messing us up. Now, uh, the text that Linda picked out, a very good text. And did you notice at the bottom it said, And ye fathers, provoke not your children... To wrath. Now, my mom used to tell me this because I'd get aggravated at my kids, you know, and she'd say, Jason, or, or I'd pester them or whatever. Jason, don't provoke your kids to wrath. In other words, you know, don't make them mad, you know. And that's, that's wise, and I, I appreciate my mom telling me that, but that's not what this verse is saying. I don't believe. Now, follow me for a second here. I think this verse is saying exactly what Henrik was talking about. If you teach your children the wrong way, you're provoking them to the wrath of God, right? I think that's what they're saying. That's, I mean, not they, but uh, the text here. Uh, I think he's saying that if you don't teach your kids right, if you don't raise them up in the admonition of the Lord, that you're, you're bringing them to wrath. Because notice the next part of that. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition yeah, admonition of the Lord. So it's telling you right there, if you don't do this, you're provoking them to wrath. Does that make sense? So, I mean, that is so important as parents. And I know we got a couple that are about to be parents, so stuff to pray about and, and think about. All right. Now, we talked about parents, right? Honor your father and your parent, uh, your father and your mother. But I think this also applies to the elderly. And I, I'm going to build a case for that. But before I do, I'm going to tell you that this actually is one of my parents. This is my great-grandmother. And I've, I've showed a lot of you her before. She lived to be 104. I miss her a lot. She's, she's the sweetest lady. In fact, in this picture, 
I said, Granny, we called her Granny. I said, Granny, I'm going to take a picture of your smile. And she wouldn't smile. She wouldn't smile. And we always got along. So it wasn't because she was mad. She's just a stinker. And so I just real, I, you know, I'm kind of impetuous at times. And so I just act like I was going to stomp on her foot. And it shocked her to a point. She just busted out laughing. And that's why this picture is so awesome. So, so I remember this picture, you know, and how it came about. It was wonderful. It was one of her, I think it was her 100th birthday. But it was, a, it was a lot of fun. And we were out in her backyard there. And she got a kick out of me almost stepping on her foot. But anyway, look at Leviticus 19.32, and this proves that God is saying, not only honor your father and your mother, but respect your elders. Listen to what it says, uh, Leviticus 19.32, thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. Now, what do, what do they mean by hoary head? King James, every once in a while, you're like, what? Well, I looked it up, and uh, according to what I saw in King James, it was gray. White would also apply, gray and white. So rise up before the gray-headed or the white-headed and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God, I am the Lord. So God, in his, in his law, he, in the law of Moses, he's telling us, which, by the way, the, the wisdom in the law of Moses still applies, right? Because it's all, it's doing, all it's doing is backing up the Ten Commandments. So it's telling us to honor our elder, our elders, you know, and this, to me, this is one of the, like I was talking about the breakdown of the family, this is another sign that your society is in trouble when you don't care about your old people, when they are, uh, you know, relegated to the side and not cared about, you know, that's a sign that your, your society is sick. It's got, it's got a rot in it. Because guess what? When you're just worried about the beautiful, the stars, you know, have you noticed that? That's the people that matter, it seems like, in our society, is people that are beautiful and young. And guess what? You know, this is not in the, I didn't think to put this in here, but do you remember the story of the king, uh, Solomon's son, became king, and he, and he went and he asked the wise men, you know, how should I handle things? And then he went to the young men and he asked them, and who did he listen to? He listened to the young men, right? And it divided the kingdom because he ended up taxing like his dad or worse than his dad. So, you know, uh, listening to the wisdom of the elderly is so important. And, and our society is hurting because we don't do that. And, I, and when I say we, I mean at large. A lot of people don't consider the elderly. They don't consider their viewpoint, which is really, really uh I mean, I'd be in favor of letting the elderly people have two votes when we vote for president. <laughs> let the young people have one vote and let the old people have two and a half. What do you think? <laughs> and we have to, I'll have to work that out with my senator and stuff. Now, this is, you know, we're studying Job in uh, Sabbath school. And this story is really interesting. If you cho turn to it, Job 32, 6 through 9. Now, Job, and you know, he, he was uh, covered in sores, he's suffering, and his three friends show up, right? And they start kind of like, well, it's your fault. And Job's like, no, it's not my fault. And they're going back and forth. And that's almost the whole book is, of Job is them kind of having this argument. But what's really interesting is there's this young man also there, and he's not really mentioned until right around in here. In verse, uh, I mean, uh, chapter 32. And so he finally speaks up. He says, and Elihu, the son of, I'm not even going to try to say that one, the Beruzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid and dressed not show my own opinion. I said, days should speak and multitudes of years should teach wisdom. So you see there, he's saying, I, I'm young, so I let you guys talk first because you're old. You know, see how he's showing respect there. That's, I mean, this is. But back to Henrik's point, what if the old people are wrong? Because notice he says, you know, the, the multitude of years should teach wisdom. Let's go for Let's go to the next verse. 
Now check this out. This is, this is cool. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So notice he's saying the spirit of God is in us, and that teaches us. That gives us understanding. Right. So he's saying it doesn't really matter how old you are in some cases because God gives you the spirit. Now, he still honored these guys first and let them speak first. But now he's he feels prompted to speak. He's actually a little bit upset with them. Because. You know, well, the next verse, listen to what he says. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. So he's saying, you know. Out of respect, I waited and let you guys talk because you're older than me. But now I feel prompted to speak myself. And what's interesting about the story, and I I hate to kind of give it away if you haven't studied this. I'm sure you have. But we're going to study it probably in Sabbath school. Not this week, but sometime. But whenever uh, all the book is said and done and God shows up, he's angry at three people, and it's not this young man. So what this man said must have been true, must have been right, because God doesn't have a problem with him. He has a problem with the other three, the, the older men, the three older men. And so it's, Elihu did a really, he, he did it right. He said, you know what? I'm going to let you say your piece first because you're older than me. I'm going to show you that respect. But now that you've said all you have to say, I'm going to interject what I feel God's moving me to say. Pretty cool story, uh, if you ever get a chance. Well, I know you have. I know you've studied it. All right. I love uh, people with dark skin and white hair. That just looks so cool to me. I wish I had darker skin. Oh, okay. All right. First Peter 5.5. 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. So this is right out of the New Testament. Peter's telling us to follow the same example. So again, proving that when we talk about honor our father and mother, we're also talking about honor. Well, this one doesn't improve it. The next one will. Okay, but anyway, let's go on with the rest of the verse. Uh, Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Now look at this one. And I thought I had a picture here, but uh, oh, yes. <laughs> That's my granny again, and she's sporting her uh, her umbrella hat that she had for when she goes fishing. She would wear that hat. Uh, anyway, I, I'm in the picture. I don't know if you can see me. I'm in the background there laughing. Anyway, 1 Timothy 5, 1 through 2. Rebuke not an elder, meaning an older man, but entreat with him as a what? As a father. So now that's not saying that you should refer to him as father because Jesus tells us not to call any man father, right? But to respect him as your father, okay? And the younger man as your brethren. So if a man's younger than you, you treat him like your brother, or if he's your age or younger. And if the man is older than you, you should treat him as a father. The elder woman as a mother. So see, women are not left out of this. And uh, the, the younger as a sister with all purity. In other words, there's no funny to business as a sister. So it's, that right there to me tells you, okay, honor that father and mother also includes your elderly, especially in the church. Okay. All right. Now, this text right here tells us where we're at in time. Listen to what it says, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This know also that in the what days? Last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, and what? Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Is that, is there, is it ever, have you ever heard of without natural affection? Oh my goodness, right? Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, meaning they don't have self-control, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, 
having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And so we know, because if you look at some of the situations in our society, I would say that this, this text is coming to pass. You know, more and more um, children are disobedient to their parents. So, only by the grace of God, right? Now, I talked about your real mom and dad and grandparents. I talked about your mothers and fathers uh, spiritually in the church. Now, what about our Heavenly Father? Huh? Have you ever thought about that? Honor your father and your mother. Honor your Heavenly Father. Right? And what's interesting, if you go look at this, did you know that the Bible, it's mostly in the New Testament, but the Bible refers to God as Holy Father? To God. It's Jesus talking. And he says, Holy Father. Not, we don't call each other Holy Father. Did I show you a text where it said, call each other Holy Father? What about your own mom and dad? No text that said that, right? There's only one Holy Father, and that's God the Father, right? So one place it calls him Holy Father. Uh, Father which art in heaven, that's twice in the New Testament. Jesus speaking again. Um, Heavenly Father is actually six times. And then you have Father which is in heaven. It's a little different text. I, I know it sounds the same, but art as opposed to is. And there's 14 instances where that's uh, said. And then my Father, which is Jesus talking, of course, 48 times. And are you ready? The Father... 124 times in the New Testament. So so does that leave any doubt that God is considered our Heavenly Father? He is, right? And so I think this commandment also has a little something to do with Him. Honoring your Heavenly Father. Giving Him respect. So even Jesus honored His Heavenly Father. And He makes kind of a point here in Mark 13 because I always want to end with thinking of the return of Jesus. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's somehow thinking about that. And listen to what he said in Mark 13, 31 through 32. 32, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of the day and hour knoweth how many men? No man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, which is he himself, but the Father. Isn't that cool? So God the Father knows when that time, when Jesus is coming back, we want to be fit for heaven, right? So we need to meditate upon the Ten Commandments and pray for God's guidance and help in changing us so that we do conform to them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your Ten Commandments. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch our hearts, change our desires so that we so that we wish to follow them instead of this struggle with our old, broken, fallen selves. Give us a new heart for you. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that you gave us as our heavenly father. We thank you for the wisdom of our elders in the church. And we thank you for the wisdom of our parents and grandparents. I pray, Lord, that you will bless each one of them. And I pray that not one of them will be absent when you call us home and we go up to heaven with you. I thank you, Lord, for all these things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.